<laughs> you remember that video? It was very funny. In the Benigning, which apparently was not uh, accurate. Is that true? I don't know, maybe. Good morning, everybody! Good morning! Good morning! Good morning! It is Monday morning. We are in the middle of July. It's July 15 already. We are in the middle of the year, practically. Okay, well today, this morning, we're going to read from the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 10, verses 34, up to chapter 11, verse 1. Okay, we won't read the whole Gospel anymore. We're going to hear this at Mass this morning anyway. We will comment on part of it, and that's what we're going to read about. Hey, Eva Grace. Okay, Jesus said to his apostles, Do not think that I have come to bring peace upon the earth. I have come to bring not peace, but the sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And one's enemies will be those of his own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it. Whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. So how are we supposed to understand what our Lord is telling us here? This seems to be dramatically opposed to the fourth commandment, right? What is the fourth commandment? Honor your father and your mother, right? Honor your father and your mother. So how is it that after giving that commandment, to us, our Lord says here, I have come to set a man against his father and a daughter against, I mean a mother, a daughter against her mother and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law, etc. How do we understand this? How do we reconcile this with the fourth commandment where God says, honor your father and mother? So the, the proper way to understand this would be to put it in its proper context. Okay? Um, to put it in its proper context. And what is that context? The context is that, that uh, people will have contradiction about their faith, even within a household. That there will be cases and situations where some people in a family would believe in Jesus Christ, would have faith in Jesus Christ, would be converted <coughs> to Christ, and some would not. And that is why, and that is why uh, sometimes that will create friction, that will create contradiction, even within a household. Okay? And our Lord, <clears throat> sorry, is warning us of those cases. Of those situations where even within a family there can be friction there can be tension because some members of a family may have faith in God and practice their Catholic faith whereas others won't and perhaps those who don't practice their faith would create trouble for those who do and you know we don't have to look too far we don't have to look too far uh, to, to understand the situation that our Lord is describing here. Your own great-grandparents had a contradiction as far as their religion is concerned. Right? Grandpa Aaron, the great hero that he was, okay, um, was a Jew and was a pious Jew. Right? He was a pious Jew. In fact, he studied to become a rabbi. And when he was incarcerated in the concentration camp of the Japanese in the Philippines, he precisely performed the role of a rabbi. So that is how much of a Jew he was. 
a very good pious Jew. On the other hand, you had your grandmother, great-grandmother, Victorina, who was a very pious Catholic. Right? Yet these two got married. They got married and had ten children. And Grandma Victorina raised all of them according to the Catholic faith. All of them were baptized according to the Catholic faith. Right? And all of them grew up practicing their Catholic faith. So that was a situation that, that Jesus uh, was perhaps describing here and warning his apostles about. There will be situations like those. The good part of the situation in our family perhaps is that, well, Grandpa Aaron uh, was so accommodating of the faith of Grandma Victorina that he allowed her to practice her faith. But could you imagine if, if there was no such accommodation that could have precisely uh, perhaps created plenty of tension in that household while they were growing up, right? But you also have to understand and hear and here be uh, grateful for the faith of Grandma Victorina. Because despite, despite the fact that, um, you know, um, um, the odds of being able to practice her faith was great because, you know, Grandpa Aaron was, uh, was um, uh, in many ways, in many ways uh, superior uh, to her, okay? Not only in education, but also in work, in terms of uh, social status, in terms of um, many other things, uh, Grandpa Aaron could have very well imposed his own religion on Grandma Victorina. But Grandma Victorina stood her ground, right? Stood her ground. And she, uh, she was able to baptize all her children according to the faith, according to the Catholic faith, and taught them and practiced uh, their faith very faithfully so that's why they all grew up being uh, good catholics right so the, there are situations like those and our lord gives us the criteria our lord gives us the criteria of who and how we should act in case there are tensions like those he says whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me so yes i'm telling you to honor your father and mother but you should be able to set your priorities aright. Whenever there are contradictions between what your parents might desire for you and what I might want from you, you should know where to stand. You should know that your priority should be your love for God. And your love for God comes first. Your love for God comes first. And your parents, second. In fact, even in the hierarchy of the commandments, okay, although God includes there honoring your father and mother, okay, the first three of the commandments have to do with loving God, honoring God. Okay? So that already right there shows you the priority of our loves, the priority of our affections. So God always comes first. And when there are contradictions between what your parents might like and what God might like, that, that in itself, that kind of a contradiction, is the cross that God might want us to bear in our lives. Right? That's why he, he, uh, Jesus here talks about um, uh, whoever does not take up his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Because perhaps that con parental contradiction... Okay? The contradiction with, with our parents could be the very cross that Jesus wants us to bear in the family. Maybe Grandma Victorina uh, had to bear that cross while, um, while she tried to practice her faith. Um, you know, given the situation where uh, you have a husband, she had a husband who was a Jew. Right? So she had to assert her faith in many ways, and she had to try to practice her faith with fortitude okay? and um, be faithful to God. And that could be the cross that she, she bore for many, many years. And there are plenty of people, many, many Christians, many Catholics have this cross to bear, that there is contradiction in their own families. 
And in our own day and age, we know very well that there are plenty of families who profess their Catholic faith. They, they say they're Catholics, but in reality, they don't practice their faith. Even, even in the same family, this thing happens. Sometimes mother and father are Catholics, but one is practicing, one does not practice. So what do you do in this kind of a situation? Okay, what do you do in this kind of a situation? Well, we have to pray. Pray for that parent who is not practicing his or her faith. And the children who are practicing their faith should perhaps try to draw those parents back into the fold of practicing their faith by they themselves showing very good example to their own parents. <laughs> Sometimes the situation now gets reversed. Instead of the parents giving good example to their children, maybe now it's the turn of the faithful children to show good example to their own parents so that their own parents get converted in the faith. Perhaps if the children show their parents how to be faithful to God, how to be faithful with their faith, hopefully these children will be used by God as instruments to convert their own parents. And we know of plenty, plenty of stories like this, where God has used children to convert their own parents into the faith. Okay? So first you have to pray for them and then show them the good example, the good example so that they get influenced to uh, practice their faith very well. Okay. Huh? What is that? Okay. That's it. That's it for us today. Today is Monday and so we're off to we're off to mass. We're off to mass today. Sophia begins her uh, her summer classes at the junior college. So we're going to get a little busier starting this week. Okay. And then uh, this will be the last week of Jay. Jay, bye-bye. Jay's going back to the Philippines with her mom. Okay, so it's going to be an exciting week for us. There's so many things happening. I hope you folks, uh, huh? yeah, I hope you folks also um, enjoy your week, the rest of the week. And we'll see you hopefully every morning here when we do our um, uh, gospel uh, commentaries before Mass. Okay, have a good day, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.